We recently got to sit down with Adam Abramowitz. Ab Abramowitz. Ab Abramowitz? We recently got to sit down with Adam from The Army Painter. We spoke about the culture of The Army Painter and the new Fanatics paint range that's coming out. And as a surprise, I actually painted up one of Adam's custom chapters, The Fist of Delphi. But he doesn't know about that yet, so check out the end of the video for his reaction. And if you need a reminder of who Adam is, check this out. Oh, laser sharks! Oh, oh shit, are you okay? Oh, no, 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 no. What's going on? Disco! Forewarning, disclaimer, Bo will never twerk on the internet again after that video. We said there's no more, it has to stop. We actually had some complaints coming in from no customers saying like, yeah, no, they really did. Um, and, uh, you know, for us, it's good, innocent fun. We're just having a good time. Yeah. Bo is, yeah, yeah. Bo is crazy. He is kind of that mad scientist, you know, owner, but he, he's he's a genius. Like, yeah. there's, it's, there's always a little bit of genius in everything that he does. Um, you know, Thomas is obviously a fantastic painter. He's very talented in, in paint development, and we've seen that with Speed Paint 2.0. We see oh. it in some of the things that are coming out. Now, the Air Range was the first project we worked on. Um, but all around, like, those are just the people that you see most. It's, it's yeah. the three of us. But there are... I think the, the the one thing that really separates us from other hobby companies and not trying to get on a high horse though is we take that yes this is a passion filled industry and and we are driven by passion especially the people in product development and marketing but we are really really hard working people and we have focused on doing this in a professional way and i think that's really what sets our company apart right like that everybody says you know uh work hard play hard that's true at this company. Like that bottle of champagne that Bo popped, he didn't buy that for that video. He just had probably 15 of them just waiting in his office, right? Yeah. Um, so we celebrate when things are good and it's it's a, it's a really fun time. So with the the development team, now we, we've seen it before with, uh, you know, Brent and Dana and Watch It Painter guys. Uh, what was it like this time around for the Fanatics? Yeah, so, A, that was... Uh, very eye-opening experience for us and it was also you know kind of scary to venture into that let's develop something literally publicly with the feedback of of uh people that aren't employees um and their fans um and we we brought brent in for the earliest test um one of the first tests of fanatic and we had a conversation over some beers and said I don't think it should be me this time around for this paint set or this paint range. Um, and I, I don't think it should be the, the, the paint development team from speed paint. I think you need to work with different people. Not that I don't love it. And, and I, you know, not that I didn't enjoy it and want to help you, but I think that you need to work with more people and different people. And that's exactly what we did. And, um, you'll see a lot of them on camera. Um, you know, and those are just kind of the designated videos uh, if, or, or, uh, you know team meetups where we had you know paint demos and all this that and the other thing um where we had a camera involved there's a lot more where we didn't you know thomas was working behind the scenes with you know people that he goes to these crazy painting competitions all over europe you know like scale model challenge which just happened last weekend and monta sansovino and contrast he was getting their feedback, sending them a couple bottles here and there to hear what they had to think. And those are people that have won awards that I will never see, you know, in my lifetime. Right. And, um, so that was invaluable feedback. So, I mean, like that, you know, that might've been, yeah, the paint, the, the practical naming is, is a, is a great one from yeah. Brent, but I think maybe the most vital one for this fanatic range was the fact that he said, yeah, you should really work with more people. You shouldn't be afraid to work with more people and bring them in. Um, so for a small company like that, it's, 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 it is scary to bring somebody behind that, that curtain, you know? Oh, yeah. uh, I think, uh, Brent from Goobertown probably really hit the nail on the head when you guys put out the video, um, about the speed paint 2.0s is he, he genuinely loved the fact that you guys listened to him and took his suggestions and feedback on board, uh, like actually putting down, um, a descriptive name of the paint instead of just the you know the wild uh the, the actual wild name to it and that's in fanatic too and like i it oddly you bring him up because i, I messaged him this afternoon 
um, because I wanted to use a, a story about his involvement with Fnatic and Speed Paint as a bit of narration in one of the videos that we got coming up, um, you know, about why Fnatic and why we did it the way that we did. And, you know, <clears throat> he said the paint development team um, was, was a good idea when he did it with Speed Paint. Um, but it was almost like it was too small and too focused of a team, right? And he even said after that trip, when he came to visit us, um, because he was part of that first, you know, the first real test of Fnatic. We had some blind tests that we were doing. This is the first time that anybody truly outside of the company was getting a chance to see this. And uh, after the trip, uh, we were sitting down having a beer and talking about it. And he said, you know, I think it was just a thing. Like people know when they're being sold to a, the customer is smart. They know when you're being bullshitted and, and that's, a, that's like the number one thing that we don't, we don't ever want to come across as being disgenuine. Like it has to be authentic to who we are and what we represent. And, um, he, he said it shouldn't be just for people. It needs to be way more than that. Um, and I shouldn't have anything to do with it anymore. Like beyond this, like, I'm always happy to help, but like, it should be different people. Yeah. Like it shouldn't just yeah. be the same people over and over again. And that's exactly what we did. Um, and he actually, I mean, I can't thank Brent enough. Obviously like the practical naming is a genius and very oh, yeah. easy move. And it allows us to have fun with stupid names on our paints as well. You know, that six year olds love and I love, um, but also have something that's more systemized. Yeah. Um, but Brent also gave me the confidence to start the rollout and promotion of Fnatic the way that we have. So like, I don't know if you've been seeing this, like the secret little like sample boxes, the black boxes. Yep. Okay. So you know, we have a long promotional window for this product. So anybody that's listening, like we're sorry, but you have to understand it's a big change. It's a change for our retailers. It's a change for our company. And it's a massive change in perception of the army painter and the war paints, you know, name. You know, war paints have always been okay, really good price. This is now something that we think can go toe to toe with any paint on the market, if not beat any paint on the market, yeah. right? We hear all the time that people are rooting for us, right? Um, you kind of nod, gave a nod to the fact that, that, um, you know, our communication has kind of won us a position in the industry. And that's one, uh, that company that's transparent and, um, you know, one that engages with their, their customers and fans. And even, even the people that don't like us, we engage with them too. Um, but we hear all the time in those comments, you know, I got my start with army painter war paints, but as I got better as a painter, um, you know, I moved on to different brands and that stings, you know, but yeah. we get it right. So the original war paints range was made by two guys who used to work in sales and marketing. They weren't paint developers or chemists. They were just gamers right yep. um and they made paints the way that they knew how and to be honest those paints are are just fine um but there was room for an improvement and and we acknowledged that and instead of just trying to make them a little bit better you know Bo, <clears throat> being the wild man that he is is like i want to make the best paints in the world like come on Bo. like that's not that's not reasonable right you know you you know that that's not reasonable like, i don't care i why should, why should the fact that it's not reasonable prevent us from trying? Yeah. And if you would have asked me you know, three and a half, four years ago, if I could have ever imagined a paint like this to exist, I probably wouldn't be able to confidently say yes, but then here it is. And the paint, uh, you know, it has, I think, the best thing about this paint range, right? When we, we set out to, divide, to design it, it had to, we, who are the three categories of people that buy this paint? You've got gamers, right? That's kind of our DNA. You've got your everyday hobbyists. It's the people that are collecting and maybe they play a game every now and then, but they probably play a lot of different systems or uh, they're a role player and they play a lot of D&D. &D, so they have a couple of different characters that they paint up and really care about. Um, and then you've got your your, elite painters, your showcase painters, um, 
know, people that are going to Golden Demons and Monte San Savino and Capital City Palette and, and competing with their, their artwork, because they're artists. How do we make a paint that works for all of them? And that's where, when we say we probably made the best paints in the world, you know, it's because it was designed to be everything that a gamer needed it to be, everything a hobbyist could want it to be, and capable enough for anything, you know, the high-end artist could do with it. But I'm very proud of the fact that we sent like 648, something like that, bottles to customers and fans. That's literally it. They don't have YouTube. I guess some of them did have YouTube channels. We didn't we didn't cross-reference that. But like, um, we didn't go out and, and send it to the YouTubers first. Not that there's anything wrong with YouTubers. You're one of them, right? Don't, don't get me wrong. We've got a long period here. Let's give the customers a taste for some of them literally first. Yeah. <laughs> And honestly, like one of the best parts of doing what we do is every now and then we get something, whether it's through the feedback at email address or through our customer service email or even a, a private message. Yeah. You know, people that have good experiences or have had good experiences with our products, um, people that are sharing their products with their kids, just the nice messages. They've taken the time out of their day to send us that message. And I promise you, every one of them gets shared throughout the whole company. We just hit all for that and everybody gets to see it because it's important. It, it's Yes, at the end of the day, we are putting paint in tiny bottles with funny names, right? That's that's what we do for work. But what we do for work actually matters a lot to people because it brings joy to their their life, right? Like they majority of the people that paint miniatures don't do it for a living. They do it for fun. They do it as a, a you know, a getaway to escape and to decompress or for their mental health. Um, you know, and and for those people, paint kind of means a lot and it, it's it's important to them. And so it's a reminder to the company that everybody that participates in this is an individual and we can treat them as such when they share their stories with us and that what we do actually does matter. Before we get to the big reveal, I just want to thank Adam for coming on the show and just to say that we didn't actually use the Fanatics paint range for this video. We don't have them yet, but in full transparency, all the paints that we did use is all Army Painter and they sent them through to us. Now, let's see Adam's surprise when we show him the finished result you have your very own custom chapter for, yes, for space marines that you paint up so what we've been doing in this video is reminiscent of that um uh, i completely missed the green uh that was such a, a hard color to replicate um, wait did you paint i did no effing way yep no way! Inspired by yours. Dude! That's how I did my 90s Marine challenge. Awesome! With the same... Yeah, with the clone. Are you... Hold on, can I expand it? Oh, I've literally got goosebumps, man. That is so <laughs> cool. You even did the blue bolter casing. Yeah, yeah. The orange lenses. That looks so good, dude. You dig that one? That, can I buy it? Can I buy it? <laughs> So, he was surprise number two. I was actually going to send it to you. Dude, now I got to paint. Now I got to, now I have to, I have to do a synth wave. It's going <laughs> to happen. I've got to do a synth wave. Mod. I've wanted to do it. Now I have to. That's the coolest. Am I allowed to swear on your channel? Yeah, we do all the time. <laughs> that is the coolest shit ever. That is <laughs> freaking awesome. Big love to the Prismatic Heretics, and we'll see you next Tuesday.